Amazing. How are you, Bernadette? I'm good. I'm good. I, um, Such a pleasure to talk to you, honestly. <laughs> you too. Such a pleasure. Uh, welcome everyone to this session. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying the day so far. I feel like it's been super productive in so many ways. Um, I've attended some of the sessions today myself and I've been sitting there like, oh my God, this is super, super cool and informative. Um, so we're going to start this session cutting through the noise and thriving as an introvert basically. And we've got the incredible Bernadette Thompson here with me to talk all things about that. So Bernadette, first of all, I just want to start by saying thank you for joining us today. You're welcome. You're very And how welcome. are you as well? How are you? I'm good. Today is my last day as a civil servant. So oh. <laughs> if I kind of show the rest of my, we're getting ready to do Let's a, have a look. later on. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Yes. <laughs> How do you Last feel about day, it? Civil servant. Are you a bit sad? Are you relieved? What's the uh, it's bittersweet. It's a combination. I've been here for a while, so. <laughs> no, I can imagine. I can imagine it being bittersweet for sure. There's good, there's bad, there's this, there's that. There's a lot that goes on, but overall, I'm sure it's been an incredible experience, right? Yeah, yeah. It has been 23 years. So I've been, I've been I'm a bit ancient, yes. <laughs> No, that just brings a lot of wisdom and so much that you can, of course, share with us today. So I want to first talk about being an introvert and what are like the main attributes that you'd associate with being an introvert? And would you class yourself as an introvert? Definitely. So I'm an introvert and people don't believe me when I say, say it so, but I think it's important for people to be comfortable with that. So those introverts out there I'm hollering at you, um, it's, 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 you know, we're different kind of uh, people. We need quiet to concentrate. Uh, we're reflective. Uh, we are self-aware. We, we take time to make decisions. I do not like um, networking um, at all. I have learned the art of it, but I don't like it. Um, kind of really feeling tired after after a crowd, um, you know. So if this was face to face, I would have been like, oh gosh, I really don't like talking to strangers. So it's, you know, there are different types of introverts and, and we can come into that later. But I think what's important is for people to be comfortable in who they are. Don't try, I always say, don't try to be, um, uh, don't try to be like someone else. Mm. Be yourself, really important. No, that is important because I feel like a lot of people may experience what you've just stated, some of those traits and those faults and those feelings, but they don't know why. And maybe they don't identify themselves as an introvert um, because they feel like, oh no, um, I have to get on with it. Or I can't be this way. They, they're not accepting it almost. Um, especially in fields that or industries that require you to speak to so many people and engage with so many different personalities. How how difficult if it has been difficult has it been as an introvert and what have you done to you know adapt and navigate so on that um, particular point so i've been distracted you can continue oh sorry about that i'm just talking to some guys who are in the room um but i think it's important it's important for us to understand some of the myths so let's debunk some of those myths yeah. introverts aren't necessarily shy fact i am not shy introverts aren't lonely people we're not people who are oh gosh you know we're really lonely we just prefer our own company let's get that out there uh, we don't hate people we just you know there's some things that oh god you know lonely don't like people um we don't um we don't say um, stay silent on topics that we are passionate about that's really important and we can network as extroverts when necessary that again is something that's important for us to kind of de de debunk that myth that when needs be, I will network with intent um, if I have to. But my preference, which is important to put out there, is introversion. It's a preference. Mm. No, I completely get where you're going with this. And I, I'm really happy you're speaking on this. I'm seeing some of the, the messages in the chat about, you know, it's about preserving my energy almost. Um, I, I love that preference, exactly. Um, guys, if you've got any questions at all, um, pop them in the Q&A box, not the chat box, um, just because I want it to be quite clear so I can just, you know, look over at the Q&A and answer them right at the end. Um, but of course, 
keep putting your comments in the chat box and engaging with us and I'll read some out as we go through the session. But um, yeah, no, I, I just think, so it, it, what it is is I want people to understand that it's completely possible to be an introvert as well as thrive in an industry that requires you to be around people, a lot of people and engage with a lot of people. So like the media industry or um, industri industries where you are dealing with clients dealing with communities, dealing with, dealing with just civilians in general. How have you found it? I think it's important, you know, that, that there are a few things. Yes, you need your time. So when I do lots and lots of networking, I always go to recover. You know, I have some of my, I always do have some of my me time. There are lots of tricks that introverts we play. Um, those of you who are introverts, you know yourselves. Uh, in a networking event, if we're face to face, you know, I might go to the toilet, hang out in there for a while, come back, have a scowl on my face. So the thing that you do that, please do not talk to me. But thinking about it from a career point of view, it is not helpful because in most organizations, you need to be visible. You need to be visible. Otherwise, how are you going to progress within that organization? Who knows you? Who knows what you can do? Everyone has a view. And that's absolutely critical in thriving in the workplace. So what you need to do is to have that time to recover. However, you need to put yourself out there. When I realized one of the things that was kind of holding me back, um, I really realized I needed to broaden my network. So I networked with intent um, and I would recover afterwards. The thing that you can do, you can, um, uh, you, you can, um, what's the word? You can script some questions that you need before you go into the situation. And then you can, you know, have a prop with you, have a glass of water and have that small talk. But, you know, think about who do I want to speak to and what, I, what do I want to say to them? But well, there are lots of coping mechanisms. Definitely. I like that, um, that statement of networking with intent. And I want to unpack that just a little bit with you. You did state a, a brief kind of tip there, maybe prepare pre preparing you know questions in advance um even myself I'm I, as the session's going on I'm trying to think am I an introvert am I an extrovert I, I'm trying to figure that out for myself but I have had my own struggles with networking over the years where I've had to do that I've had to literally go to an event with the intention of what exactly who I'm talking to and what I'm gaining from this and then I leave because I do sometimes find it overwhelming having so many people around and having to talk to everyone and everyone's giving you small talk at the same time it's draining it can be really draining um so i totally get that and i think that's a tip just for everyone in general actually even if you're an extrovert like i feel like networking with intention um is just a way of just pre preserving some of your energy because it can be quite exhausting and then you can also leave that networking event or whatever it is feeling like it wasn't even effective in the first place because you didn't go in with the right intention and you didn't follow it through so that's a, that's a really good piece of advice that I, I think. Um, are there any other tips that you would, um, you know, share for when it comes to networking um, and maybe common mistakes people make when they're, they're networking? Yeah, so I think if people have been comfortable, and I'm actually saying, and I think I'm going to walk around because it's getting a bit noisy in here, but I think it's important for people to say, you know, just say, and I always say when I come into a room, look, networking doesn't come to me that easily, I don't like it, I will do it because I know I need to do it. However, I'm not comfortable with doing it. So it's important, that you, you know, you have extroverts um, and they're comfortable, uh, you know, talking about their preferences. So I think it's important um, for us as introverts not to feel, not to feel, um, not to feel that um, we can't, we can't, um, not to feel that we can't say that we're introverts. That's really important. I'm really sorry about the background, but it's getting too noisy in there. So I thought I'd better move out so that we can have a quality um, conversation. So really making sure um, that people are comfortable in their own skin, but also knowing the purpose um for which um you are networking you are networking it's 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 for your own benefit and i think that's what is absolutely critical and understanding that it's not an illness it's a preference the extroverts and the introverts i'll give an example my first public speaking engagement um i put myself out there i volunteered and of course i started getting cold feet oh my god oh this is going to be so hard but i've got an extroverted buddy i'm sure a lot of people know him Rob Neal. He is the, he's an extra extrovert. 
So going into that presentation, I said, look, Rob, this is my first main speaking engagement. Look, bro, I need your help. Come in and let's do a double act. Um, and that was brilliant because I had him as a prop. When I was feeling a bit low on energy, he was like all in there in the room. So the thing that you can do, but I think what is important is from an organizational perspective or from a business perspective, if you're in your own business, who's going to know about your business? if you don't talk to them, if you don't network with them. So you there is a way that you have to cope with it. People really don't believe that um, I'm an uh, introvert, um, but I do what I need to do because it's part of my role. I'm a leader. So if you do want to become a business leader, a leader in whatever sector you are, you're going to have to talk to people. It's a fact. You're going to have to be out there. People are going to talk to you. People want to know your views. So what you need to do is always find that space, the kind of me time. And I always find time to kind of, uh, oh, you know, put my hoodie on, stay in my room and watch Netflix just for a while to get, you know, to kind of uh, recover from those events that just make you tired. But there are different types of introverts and it's important um, I mention it. And this week also, um, just so people know, it's Black History Month, of course, proud to be, whoop, whoop. Um, you should be proud to be an introvert because we add value within the organization. Um, actually, this week, just in case you didn't know, a, a fantastic colleague of mine, um, Richard Etienne, he's an introvert. It's um, National Introvert, no, Black Introvert Week. Um, and if you look on LinkedIn, just put Richard Is that Etienne. this week? This week, it is this week. So I was like, oh my goodness, I feel like a fraud. Richard should be in this space um, talking about this. Um, but so you can Google and look up Richard and he's done a fantastic piece um, on this. There's also a book uh, written by Susan Kane called uh, Quiet. So if you haven't um, read that book, um, connect with it, you can Google it, you'll find it. And it, just, it, it really does make you feel comfortable in the space of extrovert extrovert, but I think just um, before I hand back to you to ask me another question, it's around, about owning your own space in a boardroom. Because I'm silent on a matter doesn't mean I don't have a view. When I'm ready to speak, I will speak. And I would have reflected and I would have digested it and it will come out um, really powerful and my point will be on point. If I am passionate, if there's something I need to do, I will have my say. Um, and I think that is what is really important because you're an introvert doesn't mean, oh, they don't like speaking. Oh, they're really shy. They don't. No, 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 no. It's just like we, you know, the social introvert is, you know, I just like to spend time alone. That's just it. There's the, in, you know, introspective introvert who just likes to kind of think things through a lot. So it sometimes comes across like, gosh, they're having a bit of a daydream. What's wrong with it? They're away with the fairies. They're not. They just, they're thinking of their strategy in their head. They're thinking it internally. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a kind of anxious introvert who generally gets anxious about being in the company of people. For me, being in lockdown was fine. I loved it. <laughs> I'm not talking, no one's asking me to come to anyone's party. I'm not apologizing. I'm not, you know, so that was fine for me. Um, so the anxious introvert, they would have found lockdown amazing because the, the, the anxiety that they feel when they have to go in um, and network with people sometimes really is a big deal for them. And the kind of restrained introvert, is a, it's a little less uh, common, but actually most people, uh, most introverts are like this. Um, you know, it takes you a bit of time to warm up to people. So right. I, I, when, when I get in a space, I, oh gosh, no, I, I generally don't go up and talk to people. Um, that would be what I would prefer not to do. But then when I get to know you, I will warm up. And yeah. Brilliant. Yes, but I'm never the first person um, to, unless I'm networking with intent, in which case I'll just go all like, hi. Get it over and done with. Get it out the way, I'm Bernadette. How are you? I'm blah, blah, blah. And then after I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> You've um, yeah. some really, really relatable points extremely relatable. I'm sure we can all relate to something you said just there, because I felt like that 100% at one point. Um, and I th I feel like a lot of people um, confuse being an introvert with also being like lacking confidence almost. Thank you. Absolutely. And that is not true. Oh, you're on point, because that's one of the myths that we need to debunk. 
hello, this is Little Miss Speak Truth to Power. I will speak, you know, if something is wrong, I don't care where you are in the organ. I have my view. So yeah. I am not, uh, I am not not confident. I just mm. don't like talking. I always put it in the fact I don't like talking to strangers. Mm. I know when I was much younger, I was one of those uh, children that used to hide behind my mom's <laughs> my mom's girl. Oh, I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> That's totally different. Yeah. Um, it's just I just prefer my space. I I really just prefer my own um, company. I don't like going out. There's nothing wrong with that. But within the organization, what we need to do as introvert is not be invisible. Yeah. You're a DJ. Yeah. If you're not out there, he yeah. hello, you can't be playing music to yourself. You know, yeah. you, you have to be present. So you have to learn how you're going to cope with that. But you have to be in the space. Uh, you have to have a view. Absolutely. And during the lockdown, we had the opportunity not to network physically, which is quite draining, but you can network on LinkedIn. I'm not going to even ask how many of you are LinkedIn. A lot of introverts are on LinkedIn and they're not. No, okay, I'm generalizing. A lot of people are on LinkedIn and they're not active. What's the point in that? Mm. At least connect with people. Have a virtual coffee. Oh, you know, I'm into this kind of music. I'm using you as an example. I'm as old as the hills. The, the music that I listen to is really old. <laughs> but, you know, have a view. Have of a course. view. And to add to that, actually, I feel like what you're saying is, which is something that I've always thought about, is that just because it doesn't come naturally to you doesn't mean that you can't train yourself or learn a specific kind of skill or trait. You can always learn that. Because I, I personally feel like I was a very shy child. I wasn't confident. So God knows how I'm a presenter and a DJ and a, what I do everything I do now, media personality now, knowing how I was as a child um being so shy um and it's like it can you can train yourself to be this way people be like oh you're super confident or how did you get this job you must be naturally so bold and just be able to speak to people and I'm like actually no and that means there is hope for you as well so if you feel like oh I'm a bit too shy or I'm not that confident trust me if, if it means enough to to you or if it's something you're super passionate about you can train yourself to be that way. You just have to take little steps and little things like um, at networking events. Because at first, oh my goodness, I used to, God, I used to really, really hate networking events. I was so shy. I used to be like, at every event, what I'm going to do is I'm going to at least ask one question. You know, when they're like, oh, would you like, put your hands up if you've got any questions at the end. And that is super daunting for someone that's shy. So I'd be like, right, I'm going to at least ask one question at each event from this point onwards. And I made it a target and a goal. Now I can ask any question at any point and I can talk to absolutely anyone but it's just taking little little steps um and even if you are an introvert it doesn't mean you can't literally smash these industries you absolutely can you you can do it you just have to take the little steps um and also um yeah it's the confusing the confidence um the lack of confidence of being an introvert and also confusing being bold and speaking a lot and being in everyone's faces as being confident because that doesn't also equal confidence does it Absolutely. And they're the advantages. So some of the advantages of being an introvert, we don't crave the limelight. We don't crave attention. We're, we, we, you know, we don't encourage endless small talk. You know, when the kind of people come to the office and you're like, Look, when are you going to do some work? Or even talking around and going around. <laughs> um, we don't mind taking on solo projects. I don't mind working by myself. Um, um, you know, generally, we, we tend not to miss deadlines because we're quite focused on what we're doing. I know I'm generalizing a lot. We don't support superficial of, um, office gossip. Mm. So you will not find many introverts <laughs> hanging around there, having a little um, um, gossip. And we don't speak before we think. Mm. Uh, gen and I'm, I know I'm generalizing, but you know, we, 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 we haven't shot from the hip. We kind of think about, so what am I going to say? Am I going to refrain? On, especially the introspective introvert they're thinking and then by the time they give their view you're like woo, you know you're laying it bare quite cut you know you're laying it bare it's really noisy but when they listen to you they're like oh my goodness mm -hmm. where have you been yeah you were just cooking it so I think mm -hmm. it's important for people who are introverted to be comfortable in that not to feel that um, they don't have a, a, a fr that, that they can't thrive or progress within an organization to be whatever they want to be. I think that's really important. You can be whatever you want to be. You need to be comfortable in who you are and not let, let the world or the, 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 the workplace or any industry try to mold you and change you 
I'm talking now. You know, I'm going to do my leaving reception in a minute. I'll speak to people. But it does mean that on Friday and Saturday, I'm going to need some time to recover uh, from it. <laughs> from and it. that is absolutely fine. Like, literally, you, you honestly, you have to just do what works for you. What, and that's why there's no, like, one-way formula or, like, you know, do this and you'll be successful. No, it's never going to be that way. Even down to, like, morning routines and evening routines and all of the stuff that you see online these day, days and self-help books and stuff. Trust me, there's a lot of good points in there and there's so many great tips in these books and, and these YouTube videos. But the key thing is picking out what actually does work for you because you could be following this routine just for the sake of and it doesn't even work for your body, your mind, your soul, nothing. So at the end of the day, it's just a waste of time, really. So you have to make sure it does work for you in, in, in every department of your life. And everyone has their strengths. Honestly, absolutely. everyone has their strengths, everyone has their weaknesses, and we're not yeah. going to be all good at everything. That's absolutely yeah. impossible. And um, as long as you know that, you can progress. Absolutely. But um, yeah. And the point on confidence, let me just come back to that. The point yeah. on confidence. Now, if you are not confident, that's another thing. Deal with it. You need to build your confidence. You need to surround your people that can say, you know what, you can do. And unlike what you said a few minutes ago about baby steps, set yourself a target. Mm. Get uncomfortable. Stretch yourself. I will never forget putting volunteering for that a public engagement recently uh, they said oh who wants to speak at this massive conference in civil service civil service live who wants to you know be on the panel with a very senior permanent secretary i'm like yeah i'll do it yeah and then afterwards i'm like oh my god what have you just done and then a few weeks later they said oh and by the way there's going to be a minister we're going to have michael go and i'm like oh my god i'm gonna be able to talk to a minister what am i gonna do so there are two things about feeling the fear and the second thing is get your act together, prep, do your work and present. That's all. And then go back, self-assess, how did it go? Wasn't that scary, was it? Um, will I do it again? Yeah, I think I can do it again. So there's something about stretching yourself and not letting people say, you know, somebody would say, oh, Bernadette, you're going to, and they'll laugh at you. You know, you need to cut off those people, people that are not enabling you or supporting you to be the best that you can be. But if it's a confidence issue that you have, let's deal with the confidence. But surround yourself with people that can uh, cheerlead you, that can champion you, that can support you, not people who can say, uh, you can't even, yeah, no. It, it's, so really making sure that introversion is not at all, mm -hmm. at all mistaken for lack of confidence. Mm, oh, that is so, so important. And um, also it's like what you're saying regarding um you know the baby steps and what to do etc it's just so important that you actually just look at yourself and what was really important what you said is after you've done whatever it is where you've thrown yourself in the deep end is self-reflection and give yourself feedback honestly give yourself feedback and answer yeah. feedback from of course credible people that are around you and create a feedback book i'm so big on practical steps Absolutely. because when i do these like panel events and when I, stuff like this sessions with amazing people like yourself and I speak to them I'm really big on like them re recommending actual practical pieces of advice Absolutely. it's so easy to say oh do this and you know work yeah. hard and you'll 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 get far <laughs> but what can you do that is something that someone can sit here write down and say I'm gonna actually do that now I'm gonna volunteer for public speaking go on I'm do it do, I won't even do that now. You, you've inspired it's me, it's Bernadette. Let me give you, you some networking tips. I'm conscious that we've got a, not so many minutes. Let me give some networking tips. Oh, yeah. oh, God, Prepare yourself great. mentally. Prepare yourself yeah. mentally. You're going to do that networking. Prepare yourself mentally. Put your phone away. If it's a physical, put your phone away. Put your phone away. Leave your phone because you know, as an introvert, you're going to go, oh, go and look at my phone so that you don't need to talk to oh, anyone. Well, just to add in though about the phone thing, sorry to be really quick. Yeah. Put your phone away before anything you're doing that's important because you don't want it to mess up your mood. Say anything comes through. This is something I've learned. Don't check your phone within the first, like, like the hour before you're going to do some sort of work that requires your presence, your energy, everything. Just leave it. Don't, don't do it. Just in case. <laughs> Bring a friend with you. Bring a friend with yeah. you. Remember, I've got my mate Rob with me. Yeah. In the first instance. I always take my friend Rose with me because Rose can talk to the trees. She's brilliant. So by the time she's warming up, I would just like, hi. And she's like, oh, this is my yeah. friend Bernadette. So bring yeah. a friend with you. 
have a prop, cup of tea, glass of water. If you're not, just take a swig. Mm -hmm. um, smile, always smile. You know, a smile really does. If you're approaching someone and you smile, they're like, oh, hi. And then, you know, you kind of break their eyes. Prepare some icebreakers. Hi, my name is blah, blah, blah. Get a few questions uh, going. It might be uncomfortable, but the more you do it, the more. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm a pro at this. And it didn't used to be so. I knew every trick in the book to escape okay. networking, you know. In looking in your bag, having a scalp in church on Sundays. Still, I sit in the aisle because if the person in front said, say to the person next to you, I've only got one person. So I try not to sit in the middle of people because I don't want to talk to too many people. So I still do that. Find whatever works for you to cope. But what is important is please within your particular field, within the workplace, you need to be visible. If we can't, and it's as a person of color, you know, it's really funny saying, oh, you need to be visible. Hello, I'm, I'm a black person. You can see me for miles. It's not about that visibility. Who knows you? Who's in your network? Who knows what you're brilliant at? If I don't know, if I don't know your presenter, how am I going to connect with you? So if you can't be, you know, take baby steps. Start with LinkedIn. Reach out to someone. Say, hi, I'm blah, blah, blah. I'm an HR professional. Uh, I heard what you said. Um, can we have a virtual coffee? Reach out to people within your different industry and give it a try. But mm. don't leave this virtual space uh, mm. today without promising yourself you're going to do, committing to do something different. I love that. And it's like I always say, well, I'm trying to say it now, I've learned this the hard way, is never assume, actually assume that they don't know anything. So never assume someone knows anything about you or, or or anything in general, just assume they don't know anything. So provide the information for them because you thinking they can read minds and they know this and they know that, trust me, they don't know. Tell them, at least you've put it out there and then it's up to them what they can do with it. But you've at least done your part, you know? And then you're not wondering, what if I just said, oh, I was a presenter? What if I just walked up to them? Or what if I spoke to them, <laughs> you know? Yeah, just assume they don't know anything, <laughs> honestly. Just, honestly. Just, yeah. oh. oh, is that the end of the session now? We have I think we are at time. No. It's been brilliant. 118 of you in the space. It's yeah. been lovely chilling out with you. <laughs> I wasn't even checking the time because I was so into it. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what? Even the Q&A questions, you covered a lot of the questions actually at the end. It was a lot to do with practical tips, yeah. what to do without feeling like you're faking it. So, you know. Fake right? it till you make it. What are you talking about? You start faking it and then you make it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> honestly, honestly, yeah. there is value in faking it till you make it. There is value in that. Absolutely. But thank you so much, Bernadette. You're thank welcome. You so, so much. Um, is it? Can you say congratulations on you know coming to the end of this part in your career? I guess. Thank you. I know. I mean, you've done amazing that twenty three years, and you know, on to bigger and better. And you know, just just thank you, thank you oh. for sharing everything you did with us. Thank you, thank you so much. It's been lovely being here. Take yep. care, everyone, and do something amazing. Commit amazing. to something different. Definitely. Thank you to everyone that was in the session and all the <laughs> chats and all the all the comments. You guys have been incredible. I've been reading it on the side like, oh, yeah, yeah, yes, honey. Uh -huh. Yeah, I agree with you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys. Take bye -bye. care. Bye.